You've heard of converged cloud, you've heard of private cloud, you've heard of hybrid cloud. We're going to make sense of cloud on this HP Tech Talk. Hi, this is Andy McCaskey from SDR News. I want to welcome you to a new show here on SDR News, the HP Tech Talk, where we're going to be talking about defining the new style of IT with a number of folks from Hewlett Packard. Um, we're going to be talking about cloud, we're going to be talking about networking, we're going to be talking about servers, we're going to be talking about storage. But today, we want to jump into probably the hottest topic that you can find in the tech world namely cloud computing. And uh, we're joined by Chris Purcell, who's joining us from uh, Houston. And uh, I just have to ask, Chris, is cloud computing something that's brand new, or is it uh, a different point of view for traditional IT? It's a great question, Andy. And really, thanks for inviting me to this session. But to your, to your question, it's actually both. It's not new. And I think it's, but it certainly is a, it's a sort of certainly a new point of view that IT is starting to look at. It's not new in the sense that when you, when you distill cloud computing down, it's really no different from the practice of what we were doing back in the mainframe, which seems like it's many, many years ago. But there's a accumulation of services on one centralized system, um, really is a, is a mainframe, which is really the model for the cloud. From a new point of view perspective, um, it's, it is because it's, because we can now get services differently, um, it's certainly bringing a, a brand new topic of discussion into our IT groups. So what are some of the business benefits that people are seeking when they choose to implement some or a large portion of their infrastructure in the cloud? So there, there's many business benefits really when you think about what, what businesses are actually trying to do, be it from behaving faster, behaving with greater speed or agility, um, moving into areas where they haven't really been able to exploit before. When you think about um, when you think about the web and what the web has brought. When you think about e-commerce and the new types of business opportunities e-commerce brought. Cloud is really the same way, same thing. It's it's opening up new opportunities. It's driving business to behave differently and because of there's new opportunities. Well, I know a lot of the classic reasons uh, include uh, a peak to average sort of problem in that you can uh, very quickly add additional resources. Uh, also, there seems to be a lot of uh, interest in the development community of being able to very quickly bring things up from a testing standpoint. Uh, but, but those were kind of the initial uses for cloud computing. What are some other places that uh, are, are more valuable? So maybe a, a good point here is to introduce Christian Vestrada, who's really our chief technologist for cloud. Thank you, Chris, and, and hello, Andy. Frankly, there are many reasons why enterprises are starting to look at cloud. The one element that we need to take into account is that the market has an increased volatility. It's the result of the crises that we've had over the last five years. And business users are looking at opportunities and ways to address that volatility. And in doing so, they expect IT to be able to deliver them what they need, when they need it. And surprise, surprise, they want them to do it at a lower cost. So from an IT perspective, two elements play a role. Being able to respond to the business very, very quickly, building that agility that the business actually asks for, and at the same time, better utilize the assets that they have in their data centers or that they can consume from other sources so that they can do that at a lower cost. So, uh, Christian, you've been with HP for a number of years. Is uh, HP new to the cloud? Actually, no, definitely not. 
I would say if we really go to the HP history, HP started to do cloud computing about 2000, 2001, when we started to help DreamWorks out to release one of their Shrek films in time. They were running late. They didn't have enough compute power to be able to render everything they had to render to be ready in time. And they basically asked HP whether we could render them some capability so that they could do the stuff that they had to do within the time frame. That was a starting point. A starting point that created something that we called utility computing. Unfortunately, we didn't find the right name. That utility computing is really what was our first start in providing an infrastructure and an environment to multiple customers as and when they need it in a paper use format. Was the entertainment industry the uh, the early adopter, and how did it spread into other uh, industry verticals? It was very interesting. DreamWorks was the first. The second industry was oil and gas. They were needing that same type of compute power to do reservoir simulation and to figure out results of seismic analysis. And it went on from there. What are some of the other success stories that uh, HP can uh, point to? When we talk about success stories, I think it's more important to say, you know, what are you trying to do in the cloud? And I think a lot of people don't recognize that HP has actually got a very, very broad, a broad portfolio. So whether you want to build something, Bev and test, if you want to have HP manage your cloud, have just consumed cloud services, You'll, if you look, you have an opportunity of looking into a portfolio, and maybe this is things that we can cover in the later date, you can see that we've got a wide range of services. And I think that's the core of what people are looking for. They want choice, they want consistency, and they want security. And these are the kinds of things that are now allowing businesses to move confidently into the cloud. We have a pharmaceutical healthcare provider that has really been looking at being able to easierly and quicker deliver new IT services to their customers. By using cloud and by creating a business development environment in the cloud, they were actually able to do that. It's an example of how the use of cloud and the capability of addressing and providing environments, development environments, and test environments quickly allows people to become more agile and to take and to win business. So another thing to add to Christian's point is that it's, it's not just a question of doing one thing in the cloud or moving into a specific area. Where, you, where Christian cites these examples is that it, it's, it's much more of a hybrid delivery type of option for them. So they don't want to be locked into just a private cloud. They want the ability to be able to move their workloads across many different styles of cloud. So be it, be it a managed cloud or being picking, consuming services from a public cloud. That's, that's the, almost like the secret sauce. So we, we HP thinks that we'll see is that business is actually driving towards this hybrid delivery model as opposed just to being locked into a certain one style of cloud. I still am having a little terminology problem. I suspect other folks uh, might might also share that. The distinction between a hybrid cloud, uh, the public cloud, and a private cloud. Could you explain the, some of the maybe subtle differences between those? Christian, I'm sure you'll jump in here too. We look at a private cloud as something within your infrastructure. If you're an IT, you're a company, you have an IT group, if, if you have a data center. Typically when you build a cloud, you're building a hybrid cloud, very, very secure within your data center. If I'm consuming cloud services, which I'm really thinking about as being a, a public cloud offering, now I don't have to build anything. I'm just the consumer of those services out in the cloud. Let me add something more. Because you talked about the public clouds and the private clouds. There is a third category, which sort of sits a little bit halfway. We call it the managed cloud. It acts and it behaves like a public cloud, but it puts a a um, contractual framework around what is actually delivered. So from that perspective, it's more like outsourcing. It's a paper use, 
but with the capability of having a real contract and having the possibility to audit the environments in which you are. Now, those three together, recognizing the fact that not all services will go to one of those, but that most probably the IT department will actually put its different workloads or its different activities across the multiple clouds, that is what we call hybrid cloud. Now, companies will, while they are moving to the cloud, still have their traditional environment. And they want to run their cloud environments and their traditional environments in one environment for the end users. That is what we call hybrid delivery. So your hybrid delivery fundamentally equates hybrid cloud plus the traditional environment. And it wouldn't be that, it wouldn't be a cloud environment unless you could manage it. What would we be looking forward to in your next uh, episode, uh, Chris? So there's a lot. So as you said, cloud is a hot topic. Um, I think we just, we skimmed the surface of our um, converged cloud strategy today with you. Um, love to get into much more of the details. Christian talked about the different types of clouds that we have within our portfolio. Love to be able to show and share a lot more of information that show you more about what customers are doing in those areas. And it's to me, it's all about how cloud is driving business forward. Well, Chris, that sounds like a very good summary, a good stopping point here today. We're going to have a number of uh, different opportunities to talk, uh, learn more about cloud computing. Next week, we'll be talking with the folks from networking and, of course, servers and storage as well. So. All of that here at uh, SDR News, defining the new style of IT on HP Tech Talks. I'm Andy McCaskey. We'll see you next week.